even though my phd was abroad my field work was in karnataka and i've always engaged with indigenous people they used to be our guides when we go to the forest right they are really the key informants and they show you where what is flowering what is blue where the hornbill nest is so i feel like i've spent considerable amount of time with indigenous people and that was always there but i was stuck to research for many many years that has been the shift from research to communities so when we started off in 2016 the idea was to uh, help communities assert forest rights under the forest rights act what changes for the community members when they got the cfr so we thought we'll engage them in value addition activities we'll bring them together around mana forest produce which is their most familiar terrain so we got together we brought women together and that that is what we were trying to experiment with whether we can create local livelihoods using local resources and local knowledge so if you look at our impact we have worked we used to work with three communities now we work in eight villages a number of women's groups have gone up the size has gone up from about 20 in 2016 to now 72 women in different communities we work with kadar maler mudur hilpulya and mal mannan communities and in each of these communities the whole um, the the spectrum of you know skill set is very different some of them are tuned to traditional bamboo craft some of them have been trained to do beeswax cosmetics right so in each community the impact has also been different depending on the amount of engagement number of days of labor that they get um so if you if you look at figures uh, women have shifted from having no income or nrg based incomes to about 40% higher incomes and we also have women who have occupied more uh, decision making spaces you will see them interacting in public spaces they have i i believe that they have become more confident they have been panel members in various discussions on sustainable food and sustainable craft and architecture we we feel like their knowledge has been finally given value to in spaces that we try to curate with them and that has definitely created an impact on them in at not a monetary level but a very very different level you know it's more acceptance it's more recognition or for their for what they stand for and their way of life so we have about four product categories we have our flagship products the beeswax soaps and body butters and lip balms which is a product that can be done round the year because beeswax can be stored round the year then we have wild edibles which is very very seasonal and sometimes in a very narrow window and they are edibles locally available abundant forest resources which are value added by mostly maler women in two of our villages under personal care we also have hair care products again recipes indigenous recipes from these communities we also have bamboo craft from the muduva communities in upstream of uh, chalakudi river and there there's one product called the kannadi paya which is recently got into the gi registry the geographical indicator we also have an additional category of macrame and crochet products now this is for women who are younger who are not necessarily forest dependent but they we just thinking of ways to engage them through some kind of activity typically it's tailoring or something else but we thought traditionally these women used to be very good weavers we thought why not teach them macrame and they've picked up really well again we haven't explored the full market potential of some of these categories that's something we'll be doing this year